Okay, so first we have to open up Mobi. We can do that by typing Mobi into the search bar and finding this open Mobi project command. Then we have to give the project location. So in this case, the location of this Platy browser project and click OK. That will then start opening the data. It's streaming it remotely, so from the S3. And I'm just going to move the windows about a bit so that the viewer can be as big as possible here. Yeah, and here you see this electron microscopy data set that we have for this particular Platinaris. And I can slice it in any direction I want. I can pan around. I can also zoom in. And as I zoom in, it loads the higher resolution data so that you can see all of the details in the EM there. And this data set has lots of different kinds of data inside of it. So if I go in this big drop down, this is lots of different kinds of gene expression patterns that come from light microscopy. I'm going to find this specific gene, MHCl4, and view it. And you'll see that it gets added as an overlay on top of the EM. And this gene's known to be expressed in the muscles. So if I scroll through here, you can see that it's then overlaid on top of the muscles as it should be. So if I remove this, uh, this data set also has a lot of different segmentations in it. This is a cell segmentation for the whole organism. So here each cell is given a different color and it's shown as an overlay. And you also get this table at the bottom here. So I'll just rearrange it so it's a bit easier to see. And here each row is one individual cell and then the columns are different measurements about those cells. And everything's interactive. So if I zoom in on the head region, you can then click on the cells and you'll see as I click that the corresponding table row is being highlighted too. And if I click in the table, again, the segmentation then highlights that particular cell. So they're both linked to each other and they interact like this. So if I now want to deselect that, I can right click and open this menu. It has lots of different options like taking screenshots and various other things. The one that we want is this undo segment selections. And then in brackets there, it has the keyboard shortcut for the same thing. When I click it, everything becomes deselected and colorful again. So just to show the keyboard shortcut, if I click those cells again and now control shift N, you'll see the same effect. And I'll use that a few times later on in the video. Okay, so if I now select a few more cells and click this V checkbox, I can open them in the 3D viewer. So this is the 3D viewer and it's just gonna load those cells in. And if I make it a bit bigger and zoom out a bit, you can see these three selected cells and how they are arranged in space. And it's also interactive, so if I add a few more cells, you can see that they turn up in the 3D viewer as well. And again, we can see how they're all arranged in 3D space. Okay, so if I close this and then deselect everything again, we can also add more columns to the table. So if I go table, load columns, and now load them from the project, we can load some remotely stored tables that we have. So this is a gene clusters table that we made for this particular project. And you see these extra columns get added to the table at the end. I can then color, color by column. I can go back and find this clusters column we just added and give it a coloring mode, click OK. And now the whole segmentation is being colored by that gene expression data. And you could do this for any column of measurements that you had uh, in a table. Okay, so we can also add even more columns. So now I'm gonna load columns again, again from the project. And now I'm gonna add this gene UMAP table. So this is a UMAP that we made, made based on the gene expression in this project. And again, if I move over, we see these extra columns are added. And now I can tick this P checkbox and find those columns again. So the gene UMAP X and the gene UMAP Y. Click OK. And this will bring up this interactive scatter plot. So this is now our UMAP that we calculated for the gene expression, but we can see it all together with the images too. And if I just move things about a bit, uh, you can see it's also interactive. So I can zoom right in, I can pan around. And if I click in the plot, it brings me to that corresponding place in the segmentation and also in the table. So all three of them are linked together. And if I click in the segmentation, equally both the table and the plot will respond to that. So just to give another example of how these are all linked together, if I zoom out and just scroll through a bit and zoom out here as well, I can now use this select, select equal to, and I'll again find this column of the genetic clusters. And now I can select everything that's in cluster eight. So you see that highlighted in green there and also in the plot. And if I sort the table, and go down a bit, you can see that again, it's highlighted in, in the table too. So everything's linked together. 
Now, say you wanted to be able to share this particular setup with somebody else. The easiest way to do that is you can make a view. So if you right click in the viewer, you can go down to save current view. And then you can say save it as a new view. And in this case, I'm going to save it to the file system just for ease. You can give it some names. So here I'm going to call it cluster eight because that's the cluster that we're highlighting. And then I give it a group. So here I'm saying put it in this bookmark drop down. I say OK. And then I just have to say where to save it. So I'll call this new view three because I've done this a few times now. OK. And now the point of a view is that it saves everything about the viewer. So it saves the fact that this plot is open. It saves that this particular cluster is highlighted and everything else. So if I remove this cell segmentation, and move to some random orientation, I can now go back and find that view. So scroll all the way down. Here it is, cluster eight. I can click view, and it will bring me back to where I was. It adds the segmentation, it brings up the table and the plot, and it highlights, again, these particular cells, this particular cluster that we were looking at. So yes, it's bringing us exactly back to where we were. And these views can be as complicated as you want. So you see in this dropdown, we have views for every single figure from this original paper. So if I click on this figure 2C for the muscle segmentation, it'll bring us exactly back to what that figure was for the paper. So here we see the muscles, we see the segmentation, and we see also that it's open the 3D viewer, and it's displaying all of those muscles in 3D. And if I turn around, you can see how they're all arranged. So views are a really nice and easy way to allow you to store and share interesting parts of your data set.